Are you using Docker to build and publish images from your continuous integration environment? If yes, you're probably doing it wrong. In this video, I'm ex going to explain to you why do I say so and what is the alternative. Let's get on with it. So let's first try to understand the problem. Let's say you want to build an image using a continuous integration environment such as Jenkins. Now, when you want to do so, you will have to install the Docker client on the Jenkins. You could do so by configuring a plugin. And in addition to that, you need a Docker environment, typically a Docker server, which could be a remote server that uh, the Jenkins could connect to using some certificates and uh, a port on that. Or you could also have, uh, uh, let's say this be running as a container and you can connect to uh, the Docker server running on the same host. I'll explain that in the next part where let's say you take this to a Kubernetes environment and you set up Jenkins in a Kubernetes environment and Jenkins itself is running as a pod, meaning it's a container running in a pod. And then you want to set up a similar build and publish uh, stages uh, from this Jenkins server. A very typical way to do this is to uh, have an access to the underlying Docker daemon running on the same server that the Jenkins is running on. And this is achieved typically by mounting a socket. And this is an example of, uh, let's say, a pod configuration for Jenkins, which would have a volume where you can see that the host path is the virgin docker.soc, which is nothing but the socket here that uh, the server is listening to. And that is then mounted to the container uh, running as Jenkins on the same server. And this way Jenkins can have access to the Docker daemon and it can use that to build the image with and publish it to the registry. Uh, the problem here is you have access to the Docker daemon here. And that can be challenging. One is it is a complex setup that you're doing here. It's an additional setup uh, step that you have to do, mount a volume and uh, make it available to the container. That's one. Second problem, a more important one is you could also, in a lot of cases, have the root access to the underlying Docker daemon itself. And uh, uh, since Docker daemon is root have, uh, you know, running as a root uh, on that server, in most of the cases, you have root access, you know, to the underlying system from the Jenkins. And you can create a job which can run, launch a container, get an access to the underlying file system and whatnot, and that can be a security risk. And more importantly, since Docker is going away, the Docker support for Kubernetes is going away. Kubernetes ideally would not run, uh, you know, uh, by default, would not uh, run with the Docker daemon. It would either use, uh, you know, anything with uh, the CRI compliant like Cryo, Container D, or Alternatives, right? And when that happens, this anyways would not work. And that's going to be a problem for you. Now, what is the solution then? The solution is to use a tool such as Kaniko. Uh, why Kaniko? or a similar tool. Kaniko is created a, uh, uh, is a tool, it's an image builder tool created by, uh, by, by uh, Google and it works very well within Kubernetes and outside Kubernetes as well, especially if you're trying to build your continuous integration environment on top of Kubernetes, which is what I see happening a lot from here on. Uh, a tool like Kaniko becomes very, very useful. And what is the advantage with Kaniko? Kaniko does not require any of, Kaniko does not require any of this setup. Uh, so, you know, from the Jenkins, you would basically launch a job which would connect to Kubernetes just like any other job that it would run. It will launch a pod and within that pod, it would, you know, it would have an application that is Kaniko and Kaniko builds the image within this environment, within the boundary of this environment uh, with no additional configuration, no additional privileges required, etc. And as you can see, that could be ported to your local system as well. So instead of uh, using Docker, uh, you know, as a build tool and doing this socket mounting, especially, uh, you could just use a tool such as Kaniko to go ahead and uh, run your image builder. And for continuous integration environments specifically, I would highly recommend using a tool such as Kaniko. I will show you an example of uh, Kaniko here. So this is uh, an example where you configure Kaniko with Kubernetes and this is just a pod spec. So you would launch a pod. Uh, 
uh, with Kaneko using this image, this is the Kaneko image, you would provide the path to your Docker file, the build context. Those are the two parameters that you require for image building. And you could also provide that, you know, it's not going, not only going to build the image, but also publish it to the registry. So that destination is nothing but the registry URL and which tag you want to publish it to and so on. And how does it publish it and connect to the registry uh, using what credentials you provide that as a Kubernetes secret. So it does it in a very clear way. So secrets are a good way to store uh, credentials uh, on Kubernetes. You could also use some backend like vault for the secrets management and that can be securely provided during the launch of uh, this continuous integration job to build an image and you provide the usual parameters to build the container image with. You could also run Kaneko uh, outside of Kubernetes just with a Docker. So if you have a Docker daemon, you don't need uh, a Docker daemon access or any special setup for this to work. Uh, you just launch it as any other container. And within that container, uh, you provide, let's say the Docker file and all those configurations, um, and it would go ahead and run that job within the container and publish it to the registry. In case of Docker, you'll have to provide the credentials using some configuration and you can, you know, possibly use base64 encoding to store that configuration securely uh, slightly more securely is what i would say here right so that's something i would recommend as an alternative uh, as i uh, you know i have also you know been using docker for a while but for with all my newer content and uh, my newer courses and uh, you know uh, my newer trainings I have started recommending Kaneko and uh, similar tools for, especially for the continuous integration environment. I'll just show you what I have been using as a code with Docker. This is with Docker. So this goes as part of my Jenkins file. And this uh, is where I say, this is equivalent to using Docker image build. And with Docker image build, you provide the tag. That tag goes here. Um, it can be generated using some environment variables. And the second parameter is the build context which goes in here and then it would uh, publish the image here you would you could store the credentials at jenkins uh, using the jenkins credential stores and then it publishes it and you could also mark it as latest and publish it as well so this is the code i've been using so far but uh, uh, recently i've started using uh, you know the kubernetes based environment and a code like this to launch the jobs with and uh, use Kubernetes as an agent with Jenkins and Jenkins can run on Kubernetes very well. Uh, and you could use Kubernetes as an agent to achieve the massive scale that Kubernetes comes with. And for you know container image building, this is a very clean way of doing so. An alternative to this could be a tool that is Builder. Uh, honestly, I have not explored this, but it runs as a daemonless, um, you know, um, in a daemonless mode. It does not require a pri privileged or a root access uh, there. Now, Docker also has introduced that, uh, you know, uh, non-root user or a rootless mode, but you still need to run Docker as a daemon. Uh, maybe as a non-root user, but you still need to run it as a daemon versus a tool such as Kaneko does not require to you, you to do any special thing there. Uh, you could take any container runtime, launch a container with it, let Kubernetes manage launching of the container and the pod, and uh, you run the CI job with, uh, with a tool such as Kaneko. And that is the alternative that I would suggest to you. Well, if you've been using Docker to build and uh, you know, publish images from CI, uh, I have been guilty of it. And at one point of time, there were not a lot of alternatives. But today, we do have alternatives such as Kaneko, such as Builda, uh, to you know build images without requiring root permissions, without requiring Docker daemon as well. And uh, that's something which you should definitely consider today. Well, you could also check my course on CICD with containers, which is linked below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to see you in the next one.